President Biden has had a pretty busy week. He is now focused on addressing the influx of illegal border crossings and legal asylum seekers. Meanwhile, GOP candidates are gearing up for their second primary debate, which is set to take place next week and will presumably focus largely on economic policy. Joel Payne and Leslie Sanchez join us now. Of course, Joel is a CBS News political contributor, Democratic strategist and chief communications officer for Move On. And Leslie is a Republican strategist and CBS News political analyst. Good to catch up with both of you. I haven't seen you since my paternity leave, so I'm really ready to mix it up. Welcome back. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, last night on America Decides, Biden's 2024 campaign manager, Julie Chavez Rodriguez, shared how she views the president's chances of winning and the Democratic Party overall. Let's listen. What we're seeing is a stronger and more united Democratic Party than I know I've seen in my lifetime. Um, you know, the Democratic uh, National Committee has never been stronger. They won, um, you know, record uh, elections in the midterms over the past. Now it's up to 40 special elections that we've seen in 23 alone. Um, we have seen, you know, Democrats outperform. Uh, and so we're continuing to just really build on that record of success, that record of accomplishment and that real unity. All right, Joel, so this question is for you. Uh, I mean, is the Democratic Party as united as she says it is? And is that enough uh, for the president to win re-election? I think there is a playbook for Democrats to unite around Joe Biden. And I think there's a path between now and next November. And I think Julie, and I've talked to, by the way, others um, in the campaign apparatus um, on background and what they've told me um, is that this approach, this kind of unified approach, even to the mechanics of running a campaign, um, how they are doing fundraising, how they are funneling resources through the Democratic National Committee, it is all you know built to show that unified democratic effort. I, I'd add one other thing too, and a, a factor that I don't know if Julie mentioned in that interview on America Decides last night, if Republicans kind of continue to go down this road on impeachment, which it seems like they are determined to do, the end result of that will be to unify the Democratic Party even more. Um, President Biden, some of the leakage and support that he's experienced is within those traditional Democratic constituencies. So if you have a, a rally around President Biden effect, which could happen uh, at the end of kind of this impeachment fishing expedition that, that Republicans on Capitol Hill are going on, you could have a more united, uh, unified Democratic apparatus around Joe Biden. And that's going to tick up in his polls. And I think that's going to you know, really harden support around the president. I want to ask about the other side of the aisle, because we're seeing a really divided Republican Party right now. Uh, Leslie, I wonder what kind of challenges that might pose for uh, people who are part of the GOP race right now. I mean, how do you present yourself when the party itself is so divided? Well, I think it depends what level you're talking about. On the presidential level, I think we have an embarrassment of riches, right? We have all of these diverse candidates who've moved forward who want to be at the top of the at the ticket. And, and the voice that's empty or the one we don't hear about is obviously the leading contender, former President Donald Trump. Uh, but a lot of Republicans I speak to, and you certainly have the donor class who are looking for alternatives. But what it is doing is bolstering those war chest, the political coffers, the ability to buy ads and be more strategic, invest in more technology. That's one aspect. On the state level, local level, you have a lot of excitement about running for, on the Republican ticket. Um, and, and while there is a lot of infighting in terms of, you know, the, the wrangling the extreme parts of our party, just like the left has, I, I would say this, there is a unique focus, again, in, in, ending the presidency of, uh, of the Biden administration. They want to see an alternative for a lot of policy issues, but that is the unifying effect uh, that gets past the noise and to the signal. They want to stop on immigration reform. They want to control the borders, do something about inflation. All those things are really rallying the GOP. All right, uh, so the president, uh, as you know, both know, is focused on the southern border this week. He is taking some action to curb illegal border crossings while also opening access to work visas for hundreds of, thousands, hundreds of thousands of Venezuelan migrants. Now, conservatives have been relentlessly focused on the southern border. Joel, I mean, um, we, we asked this question, and I feel like it's a generic question, because uh, is this a weakness for the president? It's a weakness for any president, Democrat or Republican, because this issue has been one that we've seen over and over again over the last 20 years. 
Yeah, I think the weakness for our country is not being able to have a common sense conversation about this and come together. And it's because there's no political incentive to do so. The last serious effort was, what, about a decade ago? And all the Republicans who kind of went out on a ledge and, and showed an openness to a comprehensive fix to immigration were penalized. And I think that's a lesson that is um, embedded within the Republican Party right now. And certainly the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump, is not going to let up any pressure in that regard. Look, I think um, the Biden administration has acknowledged, and again, I've talked to folks um, in the administration, and they'll tell you none of the solutions they can come up with are long-term or enduring. These are all short-term fixes. They are not the fixes that they want, um, but they are necessary to help um, some of these locations, you, you mentioned the southern border, which is right, but also a lot of these big cities where um, a big enclaves of migrant communities are moving towards places in New York City and, and Chicago and, and other big metro areas across the country. They need a lot of support. Um, and it's not to demagogue the issue. It's really to make sure that you can handle the influx of, of that human um, uh, capital that's coming into your, uh, your, your city limits. Leslie, your thoughts? Joel's exactly right. I mean, there's not a lot, a lot of appetite. People have talked about true immigration reform, uh, talked about bundling it in comprehensive reform or dividing it out into piecemeal efforts. But it is a, it a very difficult political effort to move. And it it's been decades because it took strong bipartisan leadership to see something like that happen. I will say this is not going to go away quickly. I agree with Joel on that. And a lot of Republican voters and folks along, along the it's not even it's not even in, in southern states. It's like Joel's talking about democratic cities uh, that are feeling the strain on social services. They're feeling it's too little too late. And so unless there is a tremendous focus along the whole hemisphere, you know, below the southern border, that frontera area, uh, it, it, it's not going to see a real impact and not soon enough for the election. Leslie Sanchez and Joel Payne, thanks so much for your time and insight. We appreciate this. Thank you.